top five, Terry. Haven't you heard, boys? His internets are the fucking word, boys. Settle in, like, and subscribe. The legend begins of Terry's top five. Terry's favorite records. Wow. Rock on. A new theme song for the show from Uncle McNulty. Maybe we should start to call him Uncle Rockstar. No? No. Okay. Welcome to a very special episode of Terry's Top Fives. We won't be talking about movies today. We're going to be going through some selections from Terry's record collection. Why the resurgence in vinyl? I used to sit for hours when I was a kid and listen to my records and read the liner notes and look through the gatefold sleeves and dream I could be a rock star or at least be in a better place. So I think that's why people are collecting records again today and dragging out their old vinyl from when they were kids. They like to hold the copies in their hand and actually have that stronger relationship with the music. So today, we're going to go through Terry's top five favorite albums in his collection. Let's rock! Interesting facts. According to Wikipedia, the first disc records were created by Emil Berliner's Gramophone Company in the late 1800s. The most common record sizes are 7, 10, and 12 inch records. 7 inch are singles and 12 are long albums. If your record doesn't sound right, it might be set to the wrong RPM, like 78 instead of 33 and a third. Or you can listen to it that way if you like. Don't leave vinyl records outside on very hot summer days, or they could melt, like my Ted Nugent record in 1979. When you borrow your older brother's metal records, in the 80s, don't scratch them. At number five, this copy of Black Sabbath's debut album. My brother gave it to me, and it's on really cool red vinyl. Released in 1970, this is a very important album in the history of hard rock, as it can be considered the starting point of metal. And it still rocks to this very day. At number four, Live Between Us, a live album by my favorite group, The Tragically Hip. Recorded in 96 and released in 97, this captures Canada's greatest band in fine rocking form. I've seen this band live more than any other band, so this album is very special to me. Although I'm glad I didn't see them at this crazy Woodstock event. But I like this part. At number three, it's the debut album from New Wave Legends, Devo, which I have on a really cool picture disc. Is there any better debut album than 1978 debut of New Wave Legends, Devo? I, I don't know. With its synthesizers and energetic lyrics, it was a huge moment in the history of New Wave. At number two, it's a punk masterpiece from 1982, This Ain't Hollywood, by the Forgotten Rebels from my hometown. This one's special because they're from my hometown, and I grew up listening to them and seeing their shows. You've probably never heard of this punk classic, but if you go check out their music, you'll say, hey, thanks, Terry, for the recommendation. At number one, my t-shirt probably gave it away. It's my original, well-used copy from when I was a kid of the greatest live album of all time, Kiss Alive. This was released in 1975. It was their fourth album and it really put 
Kiss on the Map. It's considered one of the greatest live albums ever, and every song rocks. And I love Kiss, always. And I saved 50 cents from my mom in my allowance every week for a long time, and I bought a copy at Center Mall. Kiss Army forever. These were the top five that mean the most to me. So I hope you enjoy music too, and all you LP collectors, tell me your favorites in the comment section down below. Thanks for supporting Terry's Top 5 channel. I'll be back with a new episode soon. And I'd like to leave you with this message from the liner notes from Kiss Alive. Nothing arouses me more than seeing you getting off on me. It makes me work that much harder to please you. My body is yours. Yours is mine. I'm yours. Take me. The legend begins of Terry's top five.